What's good, peeps? It's your boy, Eduard Toda. Now, this may seem like some kind of vari variation of a, uh, you know, reacting to mean tweet, uh, mean comments or reading mean comments type video, but it really isn't, okay? It really isn't. It may seem that way, but it really is not. I just thought it was an interesting discussion. So, um, a, a viewer by the name of uh, Stephen Griffin said, uh, Edward, you really need to study the history of magic. The fact that you have no idea who David Roth is stunned me. When I see your card tricks, I like the skill, but there's no mystery to it. You are very skilled, but it's like watching a juggler. You are fooled a lot in these videos. And I can only reason that is because you don't have a real grasp on the OG's magic. I am an OG and have been doing magic for about 42 years. That's insane. That's insane. Um, don't just don't just fool the eyes, fool the brain. Dude. Yes, my generation invented that word. I really enjoy your channel. I can't find a way to see your live performances, though. Keep at it, bro. And yes, we invented that word also. Well, who knows? Maybe you'll see me. Maybe I'll go on a tour someday. Uh, <laughs> we don't. We never know, all right? That's, uh, th that's definitely in my plans as to something that's going to happen, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. We'll see. It might, <laughs> it might go down someday. Uh, now, thank you for leaving the comment. And I appreciate, you know, clarifying that you're not, like, just berating me for not knowing things. Uh, although, if you did, that's still fine. Um, <laughs> if you were going to do that. Um, <laughs> now, that is a very, very good question, okay? Why do I get fooled so much in these videos? And if I'm a good magician, and if I've been doing magic for, you know, seven years, shouldn't I be, um, you know, be able to figure out a lot of these tricks? Shouldn't I be able to kind of uh, have a grasp on, on the methods and have a grasp on, uh, you know, how these are done? And that's a, that's a kind of an interesting dilemma, right? Because <clears throat> when you look at magic as an art form, uh, to me, it's it's a little bit, you know, magic it has so many different branches, right? And you could be a magician without necessarily going into all of those branches, right? Let me give you an example, okay? If you're a, if you're a musician for let's say, right? And uh, let's say you play, I don't know, you, you want, you, you like to play like heavy metal, okay? And, uh, you know, someone tells you, okay, well, uh, you know, I want to play, I want you to play uh, jazz, for example. Now, the guy that plays heavy metal and he's an actual musician, understands, you know, notation and all that kind of stuff, is probably going to be able to adapt. It's probably going to go in. It might take him a while to kind of get the feel of it. But to be honest, he's probably going to be able to play that music, especially if, if he gets like sheet music or, or whatever it is, right? Um, but with magic, not all the concepts carry over, you know what I mean? So, for example, if I can do card tricks, it doesn't necessarily mean I can do big stage illusions. Um, well, part of, the, part of the fact there is that, you know, I don't have a team of 10 people and uh, people behind the scenes working for me. But you understand what I'm saying, right? So there's so many different ways to fool an audience. There's so many different ways to create an illusion uh, or, or to kind of create some kind of effect that looks like something that is not. There are so many different ways that people can specialize, you know? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy like that if you actually think about it, right? Like, I basically only do cards, right? I do a little bit of coin stuff every now and then. I don't really perform it because I don't practice it that much, but I can, right? I can do it. Um, I do a little, like, one rubber band trick that I do, right? Like, like, like for me, personally, uh, I just don't do that much, like, I'm, I basically stick to what, to this, right? And that kind of fits my persona, and, if, and it, I, I enjoy that. Um, someone else, you know, other magicians, they might go and do, you know, they might do rope tricks, they might do sponge tricks, they might do cups and balls, they might do cards over there, they might do some stage stuff, some mental, like, who knows, right? They maybe do everything. So someone like that is probably going to get fooled less because they do so, so many different styles of magic that, you know, whatever style they're watching, um, they can kind of pick apart because they understand the little concepts that go into it. Now, personally, when I look at magic, a lot of people take magic too seriously, in my opinion. All right? A lot of people, like it's an art form, you know, it, 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 really, it really creates a moment for the spectators. It really, uh, it really, like, yes, I agree. Okay, and it definitely is an art form. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something that, that takes a lot of time. And, you know, if, if, if you're serious about it, it's definitely not easy to do, right? Like I've been doing this for seven years. Um, you know, if I wasn't serious about it, I wouldn't be where I am. 
But at the same time, we have to, like I, I feel like people forget that it's entertainment at the end of the day, right? So at the end of the day, if if you're entertaining, that's all really all that the, the audience cares about. It's about the connection, right? It's about them being able to relate to you and them being entertained. So that's that's how I see it anyway. So when I started Magic, uh, I started purely because I wanted to do better card tricks than my friend. It was purely a competition uh, to fool each other, okay? And we only had card tricks because we, for some reason, we had cards in class, right? I think I've talked about this in, in previous videos. But basically, it was just a, a back and forth competition to try to fool each other, okay? And so f uh, from that, I started developing this kind of love for the moves. Not necessarily for the tricks, but the moves, like... Holy shit, have you seen this move? And then I'd fool him with something, like a move, right? And then he'd be like, wow. And then I'd, I'd teach him, and then he'd show me something, and it's like some move, right? So I became really, really interested in, like, things that looked cool. And I was looking in front of the mirror, like, wow, that one, that's a cool move. And I'd do the move. like, And I wasn't really performing for a long time, right? I mean, I, I would do a trick here and there. People, uh, you know, asked me to. But I, I had a lot of performance anxiety. I had a lot of, um, you know, issues, you know, just in general, like... I don't know. I don't know if I had social anxiety, but I, I definitely didn't want to get caught. Okay, doing caught, getting uh, getting caught doing moves. So I didn't perform as much as I should have. Um, so for a long, long time, I just did shit on my own for my own enjoyment, right? And to be honest, for me, just like practicing moves is is almost like like biting my nails, which I, it's a bad habit. I should really stop doing that, but. It's like it's, there's something satisfying about it, and I don't really know what it is, but I, I really enjoy doing it, okay? Like, doing this move, I just dropped cards. Um, I, doing this move right here, like the spring, this is so satisfying to me. You know, I could do this all day. I could just sit here and spring cards all day, right? And for a long time, that's what I did, right? But, um, so for me, that's how I started. And then only really recently, I started realizing that what I enjoy even more about it because I kind of had a downhill thing where I wasn't really enjoying magic for a while. Um, but what I really enjoy about it is is the connection that I can create. And it's not even necessarily the connection, because a lot of people, um, they use magic as a way to like not have to socialize. <laughs> they just do magic. They're like, oh, cool, I'm in, the, I'm, in, I'm in the social circle. Like, no, no, no. Like, definitely still socialize, definitely still have the social skills to create those connections without magic. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're hanging out, everyone's just chilling, good time, and you're like, bro, you guys, check this shit out. You pull out the pack of cards, you do some crazy thing that's going to, like, you know, they remember that. And then, boom, all of a sudden, they look at you in a different way. And then you, you continue back with, with the interaction that you were having. But it's like, it's like, it, it, it's that, I don't know, it, it's kind of like a comedian that can kind of just, like, crack a joke and everyone laughs. It's like that reaction, you know, that, that you take control over the room, um, kind of for that moment that you're performing for. And that's like very powerful to me. And I've kind of started noticing that as I as I perform more and more and more, uh, and as I start enjoying performing. So that's kind of a little backstory to, to like what I enjoy in Magic. And for me, I never do anything I don't enjoy, okay? Um, <laughs> that's why I, I, I quit university, right? I hated that shit. I just absolutely hated it. I thought I would love it, but it, it turned out like it was the worst it was like the worst, it wasn't a full year, but it was like the worst period of my life, pretty much, right? So, um, I wasn't going to stay there. And that's just like, that's I, that's just how I operate. If I don't like something, I'm not going to do it, okay? It's just not going to happen. So, I, have, I always have to find ways to motivate myself by like, finding things I enjoy. Like, for example, I hate doing cardio. I absolutely hate it, right? But for jiu-jitsu, for Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you have to have it, especially for competitions and stuff like that. So... By combining something that I really love doing, which is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, and cardio, which is something I hate, but because I love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I'll still do the cardio for it, right? Um, so I have to find these little ways of like motivating myself. Now that's another story. That's another story for another time. Now what I'm trying to say with this is basically like if I, you know, for me cards is what I love doing, right? And that's why I always just do cards. That's just what I enjoy doing, and that's why people, you know, it kind of suits my style for me. Um, and some people like, you know, they might, some guy will come up with a gimmick or some, some kind of trick that I've, I'm, you know, I'm not really familiar with. I've never done it. Maybe I've seen it, but I don't know how it works because I've never been interested to learn so I could perform it. Right. And then I get fooled and people are like, wait, wait, you got fooled by that. That's easy. That's the first thing you learn. Blah, 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 blah. Right. But you have to understand, I never wanted to learn that in the first place. So why bother? You know? So I don't see magic as like, 
oh, if you want to be a good magician, you have to learn the history, you have to learn everything there is to know about magic, you have to learn all the secrets, and you pass it down through generation. Like, for me, it's like, it's just a tool that I enjoy to use, and I happen to be very, pretty good at it, right? So, yeah, it, like, and don't get me wrong, I get a, I take it very seriously, right? Like if someone if someone wanted to learn magic from me, I'd break that shit down. I'd give them, you know, like do like this many reps of this. Like this is the best, you know, way to learn. Uh, you know, these three concepts are gonna, you know, it's so like I have structured in my head exactly, you know, you know, for my for my area of expertise, like exactly what you should know, what you shouldn't know. Like I have kind of like I, I take it seriously, but at the same time, it's like it's just something I enjoy doing. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I probably should learn more history. I probably should learn, you know, you know, who the founding fathers were of magic. And I've, I've kind of obviously like I come across them and I know, you know, crazy, you know, like the, the real well-known dudes like Divern and Ed Marlowe, you know, all those o o like true OGs that kind of like sprung up, um, kind of created this wave of new, ma new wave of card magic, right? Like technically, like a lot of the moves we do now <laughs> come from those guys. But like, what I'm trying to say is at the end of the day, like, you know, it's for me, it's about the performance and it's about the fun that I have with cards. So most of my moves, I don't even know where they can't come from. I just learn it. And I'm like, oh, that's a cool move. And then I just add it to my repertoire. I don't know, you know, I don't really keep track. And, uh, you know, if you're the type of person that that's like, very interested in that and that's fine and and like by all means you know like people like that end up being advi advisors for you know david copperfield you know <laughs> like if if they're that knowledgeable i'm just not that type of person and it's not like i hate learning i just you know i enjoy learning things i enjoy and that's very narrow in the field of magic for me um yeah so you know and at the end of the day why do you think guys like david blaine and dynamo have advisors like on, on a payroll, you know? Is, is it really because they know so much history that they need, you know what I mean? Like, they have people that know what they're doing, and they're just the guys that have the networking, have the marketing, and they perform, okay? So, um, you know, it's I don't think it's the most, like, the be, you know, like, you have to have this to be a successful magician. I don't think that at all. Um, and yeah, that's just, that's just my two cents on that topic, and that's kind of what, what I, what I, for myself. Now, in saying that, and saying that, I definitely do want to, you know, increase my knowledge in magic. Um, but it has to be in a way that I actually enjoy it, because I'm in it for the long run, right? So, if I'm forcing myself to learn shit that I don't really care about, you know, like, like, you know, um, it, it's just like, for me, I f it feels like a waste of time, because I could be learning things that I'm going to be actually using, right? And that's not to say that old, pe like, the OGs don't have stuff that, you know, obviously, like, yeah, if you've seen David Roth's performance on Fool Us, it was amazing, right? And that's like old school stuff. Well, it's like classical techniques that he kind of came up with and, and all that stuff. But um, yeah, so now onto the question, onto the question that, you know, or not the question, the statement that, you know, you were surprised that I didn't know who David Roth was. Um, well, with Coin Magic, I only really got into it um, through Eric Jones, and that's pretty much all, like where I learned all my card, all my coin stuff. And before that, I knew nothing. I knew nothing about coins, right? So, um, yeah, basically the things I know, like for like, the things that I do know about, I have I have performed or I have experimented with. I never learn magic things that I'd never really use. Um, for me, that that feels like a waste of time. Like, for example, like rope tricks, I'm never gonna do, right? It just doesn't fit my personality. So I'm not gonna waste time like reading about how the work, how the rope tricks work. You know, and that's just like I, I get fooled by rope tricks all the all the goddamn time, right? All the time. Um, for example, the uh, you know the dove act where they produce doves on stage. I have no clue how those work, and I don't even want to know, right? Because I'm never gonna do that. Never gonna perform with doves in my life. Okay. Um, well, if I got paid enough, I'd, I'd do. I'd, I'd I'd be reading those books faster than <laughs> faster than, than you can uh, open <laughs> faster than you can click away from this video. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, like if I got the opportunity to do big stage of my illusions or whatever, goddamn right I would do it, right? Like you, you, you're right. I, I would go and read up on it and stuff like that and, and educate myself. But if I don't see the opportunity, if it's not something that I could pers like, you know, I could actually use, I just don't see, I, I personally, like, it's not even that I don't see the point. It's just, I don't find enjoyment in it. So I won't do it. <laughs> it's just how I operate. Um, so yeah, that's just an interesting little, uh, rant that I, I went on just then. Um, 
that's really all I had to say. I probably had more to say, but I forgot. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, I guess. Uh, <laughs> if you did enjoy it, do leave a like. It helps me out a lot. Uh, the subscribe button is down below uh, if you want to see more of my videos. Follow me on all the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All the links are down below. If you want to support me on Patreon or you want to come join the Discord and hang out and talk shit with the boys and the girls that are on Discord. I don't think there's any females yet, but, uh, you know, actually there's, there's like a couple, but they're not magicians, so it doesn't count. If they're not magicians, it doesn't count. They're not, they're not true female. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, that's about it for me. For me, um, as always, mad respect, much love, stay lit, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.